We now enter the world of speculation. We're going to speculate about the possible origin of AIDS. A lot has been written in Europe about this, saying that it's different from what we're being told in the United States. We talk with former CIA official John Stockwell about this. John, I think when we look back in the 1980s, we're going to look at AIDS and Reagan as the two most <laughs> distinctive and characteristic phenomena of the uh, decade two virulent viruses that got out of control and have wreaked havoc on the body politic. Are there any connections between these phenomena? We know that Reagan really didn't respond to AIDS during the first five or six years of his administration, even though in 1981 scientific evidence came out that we had an epidemic on our hands. Reagan really didn't uh, allocate resources to the medical research in this epidemic and really hasn't done too much until recently. He now has his testing programs, but he's never really responded to it as a medical uh, problem. Is there any evidence that the CIA or some Reaganites might be involved in the origin of AIDS that first didn't really appear until around 1981? Is this the sort of virus that can be concocted by chemicals or some sort of biological uh, warfare techniques? Well, there are articles have been written by doctors saying that this thing smells of a, a man-made virus mm. and mentioning this Fort Detrick where so many experimentations have been done and in devising uh, biological uh, warfare and the diseases that can be controlled can be used on society no evidence has come out no, nothing that can be cited as proof and so we can only raise the question and I, I have the feeling that if there is evidence somewhere, if there was, it's been destroyed. Uh, another suggestion, uh, not CIA, and mind you, in the context, the Fort Detrick experimentation, in the context of the MK MKUltra uh, uh, program of experimenting on the American people uh, with disease and drugs in over 200 medical schools and mental hospitals, a big program that went on a long time, supposedly closed down. By the CIA. CIA. By the CIA. Also, the Army was involved, but a lot of the, the Navy's activities, the Navy was just covered for the CIA. Oh. But uh, experimenting on population centers with whooping cough viruses, with other kinds of viruses, dragging a barge through San Francisco Bay, leaking a flu-type virus, to measure that technique for crippling a city. Apparently using swine fever virus, which is very much AIDS similar to wipe out the hog population in Cuba in 1961. Uh, you, you know, you add these things up and we have every reason to ask if this is not either a deliberate or, uh, or an experiment or testing or something that's gone awry done by the CIA. Another possibility uh, the London Times on the 11th of May had an article uh, sourcing a high official in the World Health Organization uh, who claims that they had document. he brought out documentation apparently, that AIDS uh, was triggered by uh, smallpox inoculation programs of the World Health Organization and presenting all kinds of massive documentation of the countries where it's hit the worst, where, where they had the massive smallpox inoculations. And then, of course, once it, you know, apparently takes on a life of its own. The history will have to judge some of these things. Uh, horrifying as AIDS uh, is, uh, it, it primarily the victims, the 25,000 who've died in this country so far, are homosexuals and, and drug users, you know, the needle exchange. Uh, horrifying as this is, nevertheless, it's limited to one segment of the society, and it's a drop in the bucket uh, compared to some of our major health program uh, problems. Uh, what 800,000 people die each year from smoking-related illnesses, and there is no great cure <coughs> about that. And that's 800,000 per year. 55,000 a year dying on the highways. A lot of them from drunken driving. Uh, you know, accidents and problems, and there's no big furor about that. And millions of cancer, and of cancer, which is also a, at least to some extent, human-made or produced um, yeah, medical absolutely. problem from the pollution of the environment, from pollutions and additives and preservatives. And the furor on AIDS, uh, it, it seems, you know, it's clearly 
Now, of course, the argument is that, well, it's potential mm -hmm. for growth. You know, there's 75 million people that have it in Africa today and, and, you know, like numbers here, and there'll be 10 or 15 million now. History will show us whether or not that's true, whether it, it, it spreads like that. Well, do these articles you're talking about, do then do they discount the stories that AIDS started in Africa with and has spread to the rest of the world? Well, the stories that I've read indicate that Africa and Haiti were the first places where epidemics of AIDS were uh, found. And then the male uh, homosexual and drug um, using population of the uh, U.S. So the speculation is that if it was the product of some berserk experiment or some accidental thing like a smallpox vaccination program going um, berserk, it was then imported uh, to the target population of gay men in the uh, U.S. by someone who wanted uh, to carry out a vendetta against them. Well, that, this, this is the speculation. That charge was raised uh, by Toss, for example, in, in, in 1983, and, and some of the, the more extreme magazines here in the States brought it up, and I, You're that struck me as, as cheap shot stuff. Mm. Uh, for one thing, the CIA simply was not uptight about homosexuality. The FBI was, because mm. Hoover was a closet homosexual of the kind that that you know would would roll other homosexual you know persecuted other homosexuals and the FBI uh, he had it very uptight about its homosexuality the CIA mm. just simply wasn't a big factor mm. and certainly not enough for the CIA to become you know to to launch a complicated perhaps uncontrollable program to exterminate uh, gays. I, what about renegade track. factions of either the CIA or the State Department who heard that there was some um, virus that was used in some sort of chemical warfare that had been tested in Africa and was found in Haiti and found to be highly effective and some renegades got their hands on this and used it as a sort of berserk vendetta. Is there any plausibility in this kind of scenario? I have grave problems with it uh, in the CIA and the State Department, although, you know, if a renegade faction could be two or three individuals, mm -hmm. you know, who knows. Mm -hmm. the, the segment of society that has delighted the most, mm -hmm. uh, of course, is Nixon's moral majority, the Jerry Falwell, you know, it's clearly God's punishment. Right. And, uh, they, you know, whether they would have had someone who could have brought out a disease, this is pure mm -hmm. speculation. Mm -hmm. And, and I must say of the kind that does not uh, draw me so much because we have so much, I mean, you have to keep your mind open mm -hmm. to possibilities like that because so much stuff has come out where, where we were saying, nah, it couldn't be or not likely, and then later on you find absolutely uh, they were doing it, the experimentation on population centers. I remember when I saw the movie Coma back in, I think it was the early 60s, and I, 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 it kind of irritated me, you know, such fantasy, such nonsense. Someone goes into a hospital and they wind up in a ward down in the basement and they're kept on drugs and experimented with disease and they finally escape. And it never happened in this country, maybe in Hitler's Germany or something. And then I find out the MK Ultra thing that exactly that was done in over 200 medical schools and mental hospitals. What is MK Ultra? I don't recall that. Term. That was the program, the CIA's program for for uh, under the Technical Services Division to experiment on on population centers with disease and drugs. And what years was this? It started in the 50s and lasted uh, uh, until the 70s when Jack Anderson began to expose it, and then the media caught on to it, and the Congress investigated. And the CIA, by the way, destroyed uh, thousands of files of, of victims, people that had you know, experimented upon, so they couldn't ever get their files and sue. Mm. And supposedly, it was stopped, except it was such a broad program that there was never any one bill that said stop this. It was just that the exposure made everybody presume that the thing would be stopped. Okay. And I, 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 you have to be very troubled and very skeptical. Not one person was punished. Not one person involved lost a paycheck or was censored or was fired or much less jailed for those, you know, for the experimentation on American citizens with disease and drugs.
In the meanwhile, I ain't going to share my needle with you anymore, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that, the, the needle usage and homosexuality is clearly, uh, uh, that's not a, a fantasy. That's not a myth. That's yeah. something where, where gays should take every precaution and drug users are just inviting uh, self-destruction by using the needles. And there's so many questions about this thing that I would advocate caution, mm. but I would also, you know, very much like to get inside Fort Dietrich's files and see what evidence there might be.